Hi everybody, this is Jacob Reed from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at the macroeconomics question from 2016. This is question number two and it deals with bank balance sheets. <laughs> I know, people freak out about bank balance sheet questions, but they aren't that bad. Just take it one step at a time and don't lose your cool. Now this question starts off with first superior bank. We're trying to find out based on this bank balance sheet, how many dollars worth of loans they can currently make out. The way you figure this out, given the 10% reserve requirement we have here, is you take a look at the demand deposits. Checkable deposits or demand deposits are the only thing that the reserve requirement applies to. Currently, first superior bank has $200 in their reserves. That is total reserves. It's both excess and required added together. 10% of the $2,000 they have in the demand deposits is $200. So we take a look at the total reserves, subtract those required reserves, and we find out they have nothing left that they can loan out. So you have the answer here, it's zero because, and you have to say because here, because of the explain point here, total reserves equal required reserves. Or you could say there are no excess reserves. It might be even better to give that math that you just did. And that's how you're gonna get this point. For part B, we have Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith takes $100 out of his pocket, cash, and he puts that in to his checking account as a deposit in First Superior Bank. Now, based on this deposit, we must calculate, calculate means show your work, the amount of loans for a superior bank can make out. Here we're looking at just the amount of loans this single bank can loan out. In order to figure that out, we're going to take the $100 deposit and subtract the 10% reserve requirement. That leaves us with 90% that can be loaned out. Here you're going to want to show the math. You take the $100, subtract the 10% times that $100, and that gives you $90 that First Superior Bank can loan out thanks to this deposit. You show your work here, and now you get your point. Question C has two parts. Here we are going to be looking at the impact of Mr. Smith's deposit on the total banking system not just First Superior Bank alone. In order to do that, we need to calculate the money multiplier. The money multiplier is one divided by the reserve requirement. Here, the reserve requirement is 10%. One divided by 10% gives us a money multiplier of 10. 10 times the excess reserves will give us the amount of loans, money, and deposits that can be created from the excess reserves. As we just calculated, First Superior Bank has $90 of excess reserves as a result of Mr. Smith's deposit. $90 times the multiplier of 10 gives us $900 of new money, loans, and deposits that can be created from that original deposit. The first question asks us how many dollars worth of loans. The original deposit was not a loan, so we stop there. It's 10 times the $90 of excess reserves gives us $900 in new loans that First Superior Bank can make. For CII, they don't ask us about loans, they ask us about deposits. The deposit that Mr. Smith made was a new deposit, so we have to add his original $100 back in. That means it's not just $900 of deposits that are made from the excess reserves, it's the $900 plus the original $100 deposit, deposit that he made. Add those together and it gives us $1,000 worth of new deposits that can be made from his original deposit. An alternative way of calculating this would be 10 times the entire deposit of 10 times $100. And that's what you see in the rubric for this question. This is just an alternate way to get it, and I prefer this method. 
For part D, we're looking at the maximum change in the money supply as a result of Mr. Smith's deposit. Just like we did in part C, you're going to take the money multiplier, one divided by the reserve requirement, which is 10, times the excess reserves that First Superior Bank has, $90. Multiply those together, it gives you $900 of new money, loans, and deposits. Here we're asking for money, so it's $900. Then we have to ask ourselves if that original amount of money that Mr. Smith deposited, was it new money? Well, it originally was cash, if you recall. Cash is part of the M1 money supply, and che checkable deposits are also part of the M1 money supply. Since that is not new money, we don't add that original $100 back in, and we're just leaving it at $900 worth of total money that can be created as a result of his deposit. Multiply this out, show your work, and then you get your point. Part E asks us to explain why it is that the money multiplier only gives us a maximum amount of new money, loans, and deposits that can be created from excess reserves. The fact is, those maximum amounts are rarely, if ever, reached. And here we're trying to figure out why. There are really two reasons why, and only one of them has to be given. First of all, most people hold some cash. If you are holding cash in your wallet right now, you are preventing that money from multiplying throughout the system. Also, banks often don't loan out all of their money. If banks hold excess reserves, they are also preventing the money multiplier from reaching its maximum potential. Either one of those answers, and any variation of those, will get you the point here. And there you have it. If you got all of that right, you are definitely on your way to acing your next economics exam. If you want to support this channel, make sure you like and subscribe below. Then head over to ReviewEcon.com where there are lots of review activities and games to help you practice the skills you've been learning in economics. If you want to support this channel even more, make sure you head over to ReviewEcon.com and purchase the Total Review Packet with everything you need to know for the AP Microeconomics and Macroeconomics exams. Thank you. I'll see you next time.